this assembly here contains several sub-assemblies with multiple components. So let's take a look at the bomb. And you can see there is a large and hinge sub-assemblies. Uh, the hinge itself is quantity of 4 and there is a hinge bracket inside it with quantity of 2. So basically the total quantity of hinge bracket is 8. So these are the components which I'm talking about. So basically what I want to do is I want to see the flat bill of materials and I want to write all of those flat quantities into the components itself so I can call them on the drawings or in other macros. So this macro will do just that. Let me just run it over here and all of the properties will be propagated to corresponding components. So let me show all the properties of all the components in this assembly. And you can see there is now a QTI custom property, which is a configuration specific, and it has a corresponding quantity value written against it. We can also insert standard bill of materials table into the SOLIDWORKS model in order to call the column with the total quantity of each component. Let's insert new bill of materials table we can add new column here and refer that to the custom property called QTY. Of course, you can change the name of this custom property in the macro. So as you can see, now our total quantity is displayed next to the quantity of that component within the subassembly. Because this is just a standard custom property, we can use it in our drawing to, for example, display the total quantity in the node. So here I have a total quantity node, just has a static value of 1. We can just select that and link it to custom property. So here we just need to select the model which we want to attach to, which is a view. And we can see that custom property is now added into the configuration of that model. And of course, that means that you can actually just refer that in the node itself. So from the drop down, we can just select the QTI property. And you can see it is now dynamically added into our node. You can also add this dynamic node into the drawing template, so all of your drawing will have this automatic node. This macro can be very useful in conjunction with other macros, such as export flat patterns from an assembly, demonstrated in the Macro of the Week episode 1. The most common enhancement requested by user was an ability to include the quantity into the file name of the flat pattern. We can now do just that. We simply need to add a PRP QTI variable into our file name template. We can now run this macro in order to generate flat pattern from all components of this assembly. So in my case, there will be only one flat pattern of this subassembly. So I expect one export of DWG file, which is going to include the number 8 in its file name. So you can see, now we have that file exported successfully. You can download this macro by following the link in the description of this video. Thank you.